Mom deserves a bracelet. Hey everybody, Mother's Day is coming. So while my kids are distracted by macaroni and videos, let's make a cuff for mom to add to our stack. We are making a Mother's Day bracelet today. It's going to be another stackable cuff that we're going to make out of the blanks that you purchased at Hobby Lobby. And um, this one though is going to be a little different and instead of doing the stamping in the center of the blank, we're going to go ahead and do it on the end of the blank. Now when you're doing this, you could choose either end. Um, when I do it, I'm going to stamp on the right side because I am left-handed and if I am turning my hand around, I'm going to see this side the most. So I'm gonna stamp on the right side of the blank. And the things that you'll see here that are different from our last video are that I went ahead and changed out my font set. I want to show you guys how I handle using stamps that are in a little box like this um, instead of in maybe a more organized case. So these look sort of like yours do where they're just in this little box. And then also, instead of using the buffing block that we used in our last video that we got at the Beauty Supply two videos ago, we're gonna go ahead and use rubbing alcohol because I want to show you a different finishing technique on this bracelet. Okay, so let's get started. We have our hammer, our bench block, our electrical tape, our Sharpie stamps, blank. And I've already taped my bench block with duct tape to keep the back of my blank scratch free while I'm stamping. So I'm just going to cut off a small piece of tape of electrical tape for this piece instead of a large piece like I used in the last video because I don't need to follow a large line since I'm only going to be stamping on the edge here and I'm going to do the word mom on this one. So, I'm going to tape this down with my electrical tape. And again, this is to give me a straight line that I can um, put my stamps against to keep my stamping straight. And also it is securing my blank to the bench block so that it doesn't wiggle around while I'm trying to stamp. And I'm just catching the edge here when I put the tape on. So we are going to do mom pretty close to the edge here. And I'm going to stamp this backwards because I want to be able to get it as close to the edge here as I want it to be instead of maybe starting here and then it's MOM and then there's this big gap. So when I am using my stamps in my little box here, uh, again, these are all in alphabetical order and I make sure that, or try to make sure you saw in my last video, that the tops are all facing away from me, the tops of the letters, and the bottoms of the letters are all facing towards me. Since I'm starting with M, it's hard for me to get the letters out of this middle row here, so I just lift up those three, I'm a shaker, and just slide out the one that I need. I'm gonna make sure that it's facing the direction that I want. And again, I'm going to start stamping on the right side this time. I'm going to have mine say M-O-M, and then hearts on each side. So I want to leave enough room for that little heart here. So just like in the last video, I'm going to set my stamp here and slide it back to until I feel the bottom of this M catch on to that tape. Now, as I'm doing this right now, I can tell that my tape is too far down. And so my M is not going to be centered. And so what I'm gonna do is before I start stamping, I'm going to readjust my tape here. Okay, that's gonna be better. So I'm just going to grab my M again out of here and I pull it out and then I hold it in this hand and just flip it over like that. So I'm just going to make sure that this is going to be pretty centered and it is. All right, so I'm going to rest my blank on this, or sorry, rest my stamp on the blank and I'm leaving myself a little gap here for the heart. 
and then I'm going to slide it backwards until I feel the bottom of the M touch the tape and then I'm going to make sure that this side of the stamp that's facing me is parallel to the bottom of my blank and I'm going to stamp it. Now one thing for me is that if I can try to tape my blank to the bench block straight, see how it kind of goes off in this direction right now, that confuses me when I'm trying to stamp and so in my head I'm kind of lining it up with this instead of the bottom of the blank. So if I can tape it on straight in the first place like this, that helps me a lot, but I didn't this time. I'm just gonna have to focus really hard on making sure that I'm lining the side of the stamp up with the side of the blank and not with my creases or the end of my bench block. All right, now on to the letter O. I still have my hammer in my hand here and I'm going to grab my O like this and I'm going to, so I'm just gonna flip it so that I make sure that the, end, the bottom part of the letter is still facing me. So, and then I just slid my hand down the shank of it to make sure that my um, pinky and my ring finger can stabilize my stamp while I'm stamping. So I'm gonna set this on the blank and slide it slowly backwards until I feel that O catch. And just like in the last video, which I will leave a card to up above, I'm making sure that this side is lined up with this edge of the blank. And then also I'm making sure that this side of my stamp is halfway covering my last letter. So there's my O and back to the M. Again, just resting this on the blank, slowly sliding back until it touches the tape, making sure it's halfway covering the O and that this side of the stamp is parallel with the edge of the blank. That didn't hit very hard. That's better. And now I'm going to do my little hearts. Just one on each end here. And now I'm leaving a gap between the M and the heart here. So the heart is going to be almost to the end. And one on the other side here. Okay, so that was easy. The stamping is done. So let's go ahead and take a look at this to see how we did. You can see it's a really good, clean impression there. I actually stamped it pretty straight this time. I'm kind of proud. Okay, and then let's go ahead and color that in. Look what just happened. <laughs> I'm out of black markers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a colored marker. Let's go with, let's go with turquoise. That's one of my favorite colors. Okay, so the fun part of this is you can use any color marker when you are stamping. So I'm just gonna color this in all the way here. And again, I'm gonna let it dry for a minute. And I'm gonna color it in once more. Okay, now I have my trusty little nail polish remover pump bottle. And I will leave a link in the cards um, about my cute little pump bottle and my my wrecked t-shirt here. And this is what I normally use to clean off excess ink. So I can just give it a quick wipe and that extra ink is gone. It's pretty amazing. And if there's any extra smudgy on the blank, I can just rub it with a dry part of the t-shirt. I don't like that this isn't as dark as I want, so I'm gonna go over it again. Okay, and then just a quick wipe. There we go. 
and that's better. So there is our little mom stampage. So now comes the new trick. So remember I told you when you bought this hammer to make sure that you got the ball peen hammer instead of the claw hammer. And that's because we're going to use this end here, the rounded end, to make some texture on this cuff bracelet. And then we can add it to our stack and it'll stand out a little bit from the last one that we did. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this ball peen end to just lightly tap all over the entire surface of this. So I'm gonna just go and I'm gonna speed up the video for this part because it's gonna take a minute. Every once in a while, I'm just gonna stop and make sure as I catch the light here that I'm not leaving any huge gaps. I'm not going to completely cover the entire thing. I'm leaving some little spots in between that are unhammered, but um, anyway, I just wanna make sure that I'm not leaving any huge blank spaces. Now, also as I am hammering, this is doing something called work hardening this aluminum. And what that means is that there is a crystalline structure inside of this metal that as I'm hammering, it's rearranging the crystalline structure in there. And so this becomes more hard and brittle. I could bend this really easily with my fingers right now, but this I would not be able to. So it'll be good that we have our bracelet bending pliers for that. And so another problem is that as I'm hammering on this so over here, if I'm holding on to the soft side, I'm not feeling much vibration in my fingers. But if I flip it around and I hold it this way, because it's been work hardened over here, I get a lot of vibration in my fingers and it doesn't feel very good. So I'm just gonna keep hanging on to it on the soft side. Now I'm getting close to the end, it's getting harder to hold, so I've got to just move my fingers back here. I just really don't want to feel that vibration. It really, it kind of stings, <laughs> but I'm a wimp, so whatever. Now you can see that as I went this way, I realized that I saw a spot back here that needed a little more texture. But if I tried to hold it right here, this has bowed up because of metal that is being displaced. So I needed to sort of rock it back so that the area that I needed to stamp was flat against the bench block. And I'm done there, so now I'm gonna rock it back to the area that I'm working on. Okay, I'm too close to my fingers, so here comes the painful part. I'm just gonna try and keep it um, tilted so that this part that I'm hammering is as flat as I can make it against the bench blocks so that I can reduce the vibration to the rest of my hand. Okay, there we go. So I wanna show you how this looks here. I hope you can see this texture. And with this texture, you can see that the little divots are a little bit um, almost dull and scratchy looking, which I kind of like. And um, if I was to use a chasing hammer, which is this guy, which is specifically made for texturing, it would make these same kind of little indentations except that they would be very shiny. So one of the fun things about being able to use different hammers is that you get different kinds of texture. If I was to use this ball peen hammer and then a different ball peen hammer on the same bracelet, the two types of textures would not be the same. 
<clears throat> because every hammer is different. So that's just really fun. If you go to Harbor Freight and you look at the ball peen ends of these and just look for different textures, um, then you can add to a collection of texturing hammers as well. So now that that's done, and we're gonna go ahead and bend this. So the back of this one, for some reason, it came out of the same package as the last blank that we used, but this is just not sharp like the last one, so I'm not going to worry about buffing the back side. So we have our bracelet bending pliers, and again, we're going to have this face us like it's a smiling face, and it's going to eat the bracelet. And our stamping and texturing is going to face us, okay? So texturing facing me, uh, pliers smiling at me, and I'm gonna start from the right end. Now this is gonna be harder to bend than the last one because again, we've work hardened it. But that is also going to make it a little bit more sturdy to wear um, once it's ready to go. Because my last one didn't fit me quite right in the beginning, instead of just chomping on it, I'm going to pinch it and I'm kind of pulling the blank itself up a little tighter like this, okay? It just didn't ever want to get small enough for me the last time. My gosh. I think I'm about halfway now, so I'm gonna start working on the other side. So I'm just gonna flip it over without turning anything around so that I can make sure that the whole bracelet bends the same direction. You can see it's not wanting to bend very sharp, so it just needs a little bit of help. That's why I'm pushing against it here. I'm hanging on really tightly because this is a lot harder to bend than that soft bracelet that we made the other day. I made a little kink in it right here, so I'll have to go back and fix that. Let's see, this side needs a little more. Now that I'm getting towards the middle, I'm just gonna walk both sides in um, until it's the shape that I want. Let's see, this side needs a little, oops, a little help here. To fix this kink, I'm going to set this side of the pliers right on that kink and I'm going to bend it back towards me just the tiniest bit because if I bend it too many times it's going to snap. There we go. But I do want this to be a little bit more shapely. Oh my gosh. I don't know if any of that's been in frame because I've just been pointing it right at my face. Okay, now I'm not going to push on it anymore because I like how those sides look, but I am going to just bend it the tiniest bit more. Now, sometimes if you're stamped in the middle, do you see how I'm resting it here and everything sits flat against the bench block? Sometimes, um, just depending on how centered your stamping is, Sometimes, here's our messed up one from the other day, not only will it bend this way, but it'll also bend this way. And if that happens, you can rest this on here and it'll be wobbly. And then you can just take a nylon or leather or rubber mallet and just whack it like this on its side once it's bent and that'll straighten it right out. Okay, folks, here we go. Here is our, let me see if I can focus. Here's our cuff bracelet. I love this one. What do you think? So pretty. So I'm gonna put this on and it fits just right. 
and see how I've got my hand turned and it says mom right here and I can read it and that is just what I was after. I'm kind of digging this turquoise because it's kind of subtle. Okay, so just to recap, um, I have a little visitor here. We've got our Mother's Day cuff finished and he's gonna help me take them off. But we learned to use the ball peen end of the hammer, <laughs> Ooh, sorry, to do texturing on the cuff. And then we also um, learned how to bend it when the metal has been hardened. So learned a little bit about work hardening. So now we're going to take the technique that we learned with the end of the ball peen Hi, hammer. Mommy. And in the next video, we're going to do some texturing just around the edge of the bracelet and add another cuff to our stack. So if you want to plan ahead, um, you can either use the blanks that we have here. Thank you. You're going to show the bracelet. So we'll either use the blanks that we've been using, or if you want to run back to the store and pick up some blanks that are more narrow or more wide so that you can give some variety to your stack, that would be a fun thing to do. So I will catch you in the next video for one more stackable cuff. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Say bye guys. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs> Good job. Oh. oh, oh gosh. I can get it. Okay. Oh! I'm going to do your shot. <laughs>